One thing for sure, two things for certain. It's nice and cold. Hey. Now I see how the how the how them football players be feeling playing in that zero degree weather. Them little clothes on. <laughs> This is my warm-up mission. Ah. Ah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Gotta get right, you gotta get right. <laughs> Let's go, baby. It's nine o'clock. Let's make it happen. Y'all know what we do every day at nine o'clock. We make it happen. We get it in. We good, we good, we good, we good, we good. My glasses, my Bible. <laughs> my tower <laughs> and my people <laughs> let's make it happen baby good morning good morning good morning dt and hour this is the dt and hour we drop the net every day at nine o'clock we set the table we eat we drink and we be merry <laughs> good morning good morning good morning let's see what's today today tuesday right so we passed 10 days. So we're going to make this thing work. I don't know. Well, we don't need all that noise in our way, that's for sure. You're not about to do all that ticking and tanging, and we going to do all that. Okay. Day Tuesday. So, I mean, yesterday we broke down what happened Sunday. Sunday we came out of the book of Job. We dealt with hold on to your integrity. Yesterday we broke it down. We touched on a little the sixth chapter of Revelation, so we went from Job to Revelation. We're gonna go back in Revelation. We're gonna deal with the second seal. We're gonna deal with the red horse. We're gonna get a better understanding of the seals. We're gonna touch the seals. We're gonna go in First Timothy. Go go in Timothy. Grab some out of Timothy. Go in First Thessalonians. Grab some out of First Thessalonians. Go in Second Thessalonians. Grab some out of Second Thessalonians. Go in the eighth chapter John. Grab some out of John. But the very most important thing is getting an understanding of the seven seals. I think y'all doing pretty good. Some, a few people asked me a few questions about what, you know, the teachings, etc., etc. Man, y'all the best. You all are the best. Now, quick question. What are the seven seals? What are the seven seals? What are the seven churches? The seven churches, the seven seals. What are the seven seals? What are the, this year? March? All the way to December. I just was giving it to you, giving it to you. January, all the way back to December. I want you to make sure that you have an understanding. So now when you all hear this stuff, that you can teach it to the next person. You just won't be saying it because a lot of us, a lot of us here, this is our first time hearing this. And since it's our first time hearing it, we really don't know it, we really don't understand it, and we like to repeat it, so we like to tell it to the next person. Now, the seven seals are the book. The book is sealed up with seven seals. Whenever somebody talk about the seven seals in the book of Revelation, it's the book. It's the book of destiny. It's the book that's to come. It's the book of life. And the book of life is sealed with seven seals. Okay? Okay, so don't get it. Just The book is sealed up. And the only way the book will be open is once all the seals come up off the book. So, the seven seals in the book of Revelation deals with the seals that are on the book. So when somebody goes to talking about the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, the people that have been martyred, the great catastrophe, they're talking about the seals that are on the book. Now, get my coffee, baby. Get your coffee, get your milk, get your juice, get your water, whatever you're going to drink, because we're going to run this thing. We're going to go back in the 24th chapter of Matthew. I'm going to go in Matthew and see. Ah, boom, boom, boom. 24, 5 and 6. Come on, 5 and 6. Boom. Jump down to 9 and 10. 9 and 10. Boom. 
jumped down to 14, 14, 15 deal with the abomination desolation on 15, no 14. So I'm going to go Matthew 24 and 13, right? So if I come up to Matthew 24 and 13, I'm going to take you to Thessalonians. I'm going to go to Thessalonians because in 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to show you the rapture. After I show you the rapture, I'm going to show you how in between the rapture and the tribulation starts. Now, as the Bible said, no man know the day, the time, or hour. But pay close, pay very, 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 very close attention. If I tell it to you, I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. Jesus was always putting his people on top of game. Always. I'm going to take you in 1 Thessalonians. And I'm going to show you in 1 Thessalonians 3, 4, 5th chapter. 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter. I'm going to show you where even Paul, even Paul is letting the Thessalonians know how Jesus was always putting his people on top of game. Now, when we go in the 24th chapter, remember the 24th chapter of Matthew is prediction. Jesus is predicting what is going to happen in the ending of time because of the question that his disciples asked him. When you go in the book of Daniel, Daniel is the Old Testament book of Revelation. Daniel is the Old Testament book of Revelation. Daniel and Revelation goes hand in hand. Okay, I'm going to go in the 12th chapter of Daniel. I'm going to show you the seals in the book of Daniel. So we're going to come out of Daniel. We're going to bounce out of Daniel into Matthew. Bounce out of Matthew into Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Bounce out of First Thessalonians. We're going to go in First Timothy. Bounce out of First Timothy. We're going to go back into the sixth chapter of Revelation, and we're going to deal with the second seal. The second seal deals with the red horse. The red horse is stated in scriptures that he's going to take peace. He's going to take peace out of the land. So if he's going to take the peace out of the land, that lets us know all hell going to break loose. But, but we're not into the tribulations yet. This is between tribulation and sorrows, tribulation and sorrows. Tribulation have not started yet. These are the seals. These are the seals that are coming up off the book. These are the seals that's coming up off the book. So once the book is open, tribulation starts. Once the book is open, tribulation starts. The seventh seal opens the first trumpet judgment. The seventh seal opens the first trumpet judgment. The first trumpet judgment start, don't start to the eighth chapter of Revelation. The seventh seal is not in the sixth chapter. It's in the eighth chapter. Now, okay, so now, whenever you hear somebody talking about the seven seals, it's because the book... Watch this. I like this coffee cup to close tight. Not everybody watch this, right? But, every, but for us who watch it. Okay, watch this. When ghosts died, before ghosts died, ghosts had a will. Before ghosts died, ghosts had a will. Now, when it was time to open the will, everybody that had anything to do with the will had to be present. Everybody that had anything to do with the will was present. So when the wheel was read, all of those people were present. Now, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, all of those were representation of what's in the book. The book was sealed by them. They had to be present for the book to be open. So once the seal came off the book, now the book is ready to be open. Now we're getting ready to see what's written in the book. Now, watch this. Tariq got himself in some trouble, right? So Tyreek goes to the lawyer. So Tyreek tells the lawyer, can he get some of the money? Why? Because he's in trouble. But the lawyer told him, no. Because in the will, your daddy said, you have to complete school and you have to have a certain point grade average. Why? Because that's what's in the will. Old Testament, will of God. New Testament, will of God. Book of Revelation, will of God. A lot of us believers, a lot of us Christian folks, we want to be like Tyreek. The minute we get in trouble, we want to run and get some. No, it don't go like that, baby. We got to do what's written in the will. So however the will go, 
That's how it's going to go. But we don't know the will. We don't know what's in the will of God. So we think we could just do like Tyree and just go to God. Well, God, I just need a few dollars. I don't need no God. I said, nah, little brother, you're going to go by what's written in the will. So once the seals come off of the book, once the seal come off the book, now you see what's written in the will. And that's all the book of Revelation is, is the will of God. I'm going to walk you in Matthew and show it to you. I'm going to walk you in 1 Thessalonians and show it to you. I'm going to walk you in 1 Timothy and show it to you. I'm going to take you in John and show it to you. People, all this year, I'm going to go slow, 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 slow. So if you repeat this. The other day I heard somebody say that the seven churches in the book of Revelation are not real churches. Okay. Last week I showed you all all the churches plus the four churches because it's not just seven churches, it really was 11 churches, but Jesus only used seven churches. You get to the 22nd chapter of Revelation, and Jesus said, "John, did all the churches get this letter? Every church, every church that's considered a church should know the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation was written it was written and given to all churches no such thing as these churches don't exist I showed you the churches I could take you in the 14th chapter show them to you I could take you in the 15th chapter show them and I could show you in the 16th chapter of Revelation then I could bound, I mean um, Acts and then I could bound in the 19th chapter of Acts and show you all seven churches. This is the beautiful part, people. Paul did not start those churches in the book of Revelation. This is why, this is why God uses those churches. The Spirit of God started those churches. Paul started Corinthians. Paul started Philippians. Paul started Galatians. He started those churches. Those seven churches in the book of Revelation, Paul didn't start those churches. That's why God used those churches. To let man know, you ain't had nothing to do with this one, baby. I started these on my own. That's why I know it's a dead church. I know it's a church without love. I know it's a compromising church. I know it's a worldly church. I know it's a church full of love. And I know that's in a church with, that's not, I know. Why? Because I started them churches. So now, when we get in this sixth chapter of Revelation, and we deal with the red horse. The red horse is to take peace out of the land. So, people, if this is the part, if this is a part of God's will that's been sealed in the testament of what's going to take place, why we why we keep saying it's going to get better? Why? People, why? Why we even believe that on some real real talk? I'm going to take you in Matthew and I'm going to show you why it is not going to get better. I'm going to take you in Thessalonians and I'm going to show you what Paul would tell the Thessalonians he said, when y'all see these things happening just like Jesus told them, when y'all see this stuff happening, <laughs> don't panic <laughs> don't panic, it's supposed to happen, it is written, this is a part of God's will, this is how God going to end this thing, this is how God going to judge this world watch this, let's go in Matthew first Come out of Matthew, we're going to stop in Thessalonians. Come out of Thessalonians, we're going to go in Revelation. Come out of Revelation, we're going to go back in Thessalonians. Come out of Thessalonians, we're going to go back in Timothy. Watch this. Pay attention. Matthew. Come here, Matthew. Watch this. Matthew 24 says, Matthew 24 says, 6 verse, Matthew 24 and 6 says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, so if we're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars, this got to come to pass. So why we keep praying for it to go away? It's not going away, people. It is not. All of this is the will of 
go away. He said, Jesus said, don't get it twisted. Don't trip out. Don't trip out. This stuff got to come to pass. But the thing is, Jesus was always putting them on top of game, people. Why? So they won't be around here talking about no white people, black people, green people, all this. No, they'll stay focused on God and see that this thing, what is called life, is slowly but surely coming to an end. Watch this. Matthew 24 and 14 says, Back it up. Back it up to 12. Matthew, Matthew 24 and 12 says, And because, and because, and because, and because of iniquity, and because iniquity, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold because of iniquity. Because people, people are going to start to talk less and less about God. People are going to start to care less and less about God. He said, because iniquity, iniquity, sin, sin. People are just going to want sin and sin and sin. They don't care nothing about nothing else. They're just going to want sin and sin. Why? Because that's all they're going to want to do. This is what Jesus said. Because of iniquity. Then look what he says. It's Bible. And because iniquity shall abound, in other words, this sin gonna just grow and grow and grow and grow. The next day he said, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. Can somebody raise their hand and please show me where it's gonna get better? Anybody, I don't care, anybody. Can you please raise your hand and show me where it's going to get better? When Jesus said you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars and you see that happening. He said, well, don't get caught up in that. Don't trip on that. Why? Because these things got to come to pass. But they ain't not yet. And then you're going to see what? Because of iniquity shall bound and the love of many shall wax cold. This stuff is happening right now. I will never stand here or in the church or nowhere else and say, people, it's going to get better. It's not, people. Anybody, please come show me. Proverbs, Proverbs 12 and 1 say, if any man don't like correction, he's stupid. I don't want to be stupid. So can somebody please come correct me and show me in this Bible what is going to get better? Anybody, anybody anybody because Proverbs 12 and 1 says if any man don't like correction he's stupid and I don't want to be stupid so can somebody please come show me where it's going to get better watch this first Thessalonians come here Thessalonians I'm going to three T's Thessalonians Titus and Timothy Thessalonians Timothy and Titus watch this first Thessalonians right in order to understand the fifth chapter, you got to come out of the fourth chapter. When you come out of the fourth chapter of Thessalonians, you got to look at the rapture. So in the fourth chapter of Thessalonians, it tells you about well, what? The trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and all that good stuff, right? Okay, that's the fourth chapter. But when you get in the fifth chapter, after coming out of the fourth chapter, talking about the rapture, look what happens. So now I'm going to give you a better understanding of the book of Revelation. To give you a better understanding of the book of Revelation, look what, Tim look what Paul talks about the rapture and look what Paul talks about tribulation. Look what Paul talks about the rapture. Look what Paul talks about tribulation. Stay focused. Why? Because after, after, after the seals come off of the book, the book is open. Now we're in tribulation. But we're not in tribulation, people. We're still dealing with times of sorrow. For the end is not yet. Is not that what Jesus said in the 24th chapter of Matthew? Watch what Paul says to the Thessalonians. This is why, see that Bible? See that Bible? God has blessed me to be able to break that Bible down into four books. Four books. I'm talking about all 66 books and four books. I will go in John. You know why I will go in John? Because John deals with the deity of Jesus. For John said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So okay, and when I get in John, I went all the way to the beginning. So now I deal with the deity of Jesus. Why he came, what he was here for the whole nine yards. 
Okay, let's go to Romans. That's my second book. Why? Because Romans deal with law, whether it's spiritual law or the worldly law. Romans deal with law and Romans deal with grace. So I got the deity of Jesus and now I got law. So after I deal with the deity of Jesus, which is John, and I deal with the book of Romans, which is law, I got to go with First and Second Thessalonians. The reason why I go with First and Second Thessalonians, because that deal with what? The coming of Christ. So now, what else it is to know? What else is it to know? I got the deity of Jesus, for John said in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh, and it dwelt among men. Boom. I go into Romans, now I know now I'm no longer under the law, I'm under grace. Boom. I go to First and Second Thessalonians, it tells me about the second coming, it tells me about the rapture. What else is it to know? What else it is it to know in the whole folk, folk books? Four books. Watch this though. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, fifth chapter. First Thessalonians, fifth chapter, right? But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm in I'm in First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. The very first verse starts off saying, but, but, but bag it up. Bag up into the fourth chapter. This is why I tell my people. I tell my people, don't let nobody give y'all no one verse. Don't never let nobody give y'all no one verse. Let them break that whole chapter down. And then tell them to take you to the chapter before that and the chapter after that. Watch this. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, starts off saying, but. Why? What you talking about, but? What you talking about, Paul? But. What that but is there for, Paul? I need to understand but before I go any further. But in order to understand but, I go to go backwards. I'm going in the fourth chapter. Verse 16, 17, 18. Watch what it says. Verse 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall ever be with the Lord. We'll, we'll forever couple one another with these words. Boom! That's fourth chapter. Jump into the fifth chapter, very first verse. But of the times in the season, but of the times in the season, but Paul saying, Paul saying, but the time in the season, we don't know when this rapture thing gonna happen. Nowhere in the book of Revelation will you get to see the rapture. The rapture is nowhere in the book of Revelation, but the rapture in the book of Thessalonians. But you got to be able to tie the books in together. So you got to be able to bump from the rapture in Thessalonians to the end of time in Thessalonians to what's going to happen in the tribulation in the book of Revelation. But if you don't know the book, how are you going to tie the book in together? So now don't just give me no 16, 17, and 18 verse without giving me the fifth chapter that's going to take me to the butt where Paul said no man know the season. Watch this, people. Watch this. Now you got 16, 17, 18 in the fourth chapter. We've been told all our life that's the rapture. But you can't find the rapture nowhere in the book of Revelation. But Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonians letting them know. Why? Because the Spirit of God taught Paul. Watch this. Five and one says, First Thessalonians 5 and 1 says, But of the times in the season, brethren, you have no need that I write that. <laughs> Paul said, I don't know that. Paul said, the time in the season, I don't need to write that to you because I don't know it. I done told you what's going to happen. But I already done told you, then we are alive and who should remain should be caught up. I done gave you that. But when it's going to happen, I don't know. So no need for me to write to you to tell you that. Now, verse 2 says, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Y'all know this. I've been telling y'all that. Verse 3. For when they shall, for when they shall say peace and safety, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travaileth upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Back to Matt 24, chapter of Matthew. For Jesus said, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. Y'all think it's going to be people and it's going to be safety. No. Boom. Then suddenly come destruction. Now what? Now what? Because not all hell done broke loose. Now what? 
You got your peace and you got your safety. Now what? Pay close attention. First, five and three, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden, boom, destruction come upon them as travailed upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Verse four, I love verse four. First Thessalonians five and four. But you brethren, but you brethren, but you brethren are not in darkness that the day shall overtake you as a thief. But you're not in darkness that when this stuff gonna happen, it's gonna take you as a thief. Why? Because you all are on top of game. You're on top of game, baby. <laughs> You on top of game. So when all that stuff like what happened at the White House, man, let the people do them. <laughs> That's the world. The world gonna be the world. Even though we in the world, we not of the world. But who are we to judge them? We are nobody to judge them because this is Bible. You sit back and watch this Bible being played out. But nobody never really broke this stuff down to us. So we don't really know. We just trying to take it for face value. People. All this stuff is written in the Bible. Everything you see being played out is written in the Bible. But Paul said it won't catch us like a thief. Why? That's why Paul was constantly putting his people on top of game. Jesus was constantly putting his people on top of game. So when this stuff started to happen all around them, <laughs> they fell back. <laughs> it was to happen. <laughs> but the Bible said it was going to happen. Well, now, God, I see you not no lie, God. Because what's in your word is what's happening. But watch this, people. I'm going to take you to John, and I'm going to show you something. Then I'm going to bring you back to Thessalonians. Then I'm going to take you to Timothy. Then I'm going to take you back to 2 Thessalonians. But look what John says. Come here, John. Where you at, baby? Look what, look what Jesus said in the book of John. Look what Jesus said. Watch this. John 8, 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Jesus said, why you do not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Verse 44, you are of your father, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, you will do. And the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and a boy not in the truth because there's no truth in him. Because there's no truth in him. When he speak a lie, he speak of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. I ain't right it, baby. I'm just telling you what the Bible says, which takes me back in 2 Thessalonians. So when I go back in Thessalonians, watch this. Watch this. Verse 4, but you are but you but you brethren are not in darkness that the day shall overtake you as a thief. Verse five, you are the children of light and the children of day. We are not, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Verse seven, verse six, therefore, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. What takes me all the way back to Sunday message when I dealt with Job. Why? Because God asked Satan, what you doing, baby? He said, I've been roaming to and fro. I've been running around seeing who I can drive, who I can stress out, who I can make cuss you out, God, who I can make doubt you. What have you considered Job? <laughs> I know you've been watching Job. I know you won't get Job. Go ahead, how long you been there? I'm going to let you do Job. I'm going to show you Job is that God. Watch this, people. When you go in the fifth chapter of First Peter, in the fifth chapter of First Peter, Peter said he's like a roaring lion. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. Which takes me all the way back to 
Job. So when I go back to Job and I go back to Peter, I say, hold up. Look at all this stuff jumping off. Look at all this stuff jumping off. People, all this stuff goes together. So now, 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 what are we worried about as believers? That's the first thing. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Why? Because God going to always put his children on top of game. Now, for the one of people, Jesus said they, they fought this Satan. He was a murder in the beginning. He going to be a murder in the end. He is the father of lies. So all he do is tell lies. Watch this. This the one going to blow you. To give you a better understanding of the seven seals. To give you a better understanding of what Jesus was talking about. This is the one going to blow you. Why? Because Jesus said many prophets, many prophets going to pop up in the end time. How many of us really understood what Paul was saying to Timothy? Watch this. Did you think, did you think that Salonia, I'll be back. I'll be back. Let me holler at Timothy for a second. Come here a second, Timothy. Come here, don't you run. Gotcha. Pay very, very close attention to how I'm getting ready to teach this. Pay very, very close attention. I'm going to take it into the third chapter of Timothy, 2 Timothy. Y'all done heard this a thousand times. And as a pastor, we done made you all believe that this is about you all. This is not about you all. This is about those who are in leadership position. Watch this. Watch this. Second Timothy third chapter. Second Timothy third chapter. This know also. This know also. This know also. First, first, second Timothy third chapter, first verse. This know also. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, wait, stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there, Paul. This know also. What you mean? So, you about to tell me something else, but I need to know. So I, I'm, I'm, I need to know this also. But what I, what, what I need to know before that? What you tell me before that, Paul? So we quickly run the Second Timothy third chapter, that first verse. But Paul said, "Know this also." So I need to know what's before the third chapter, as well as what he's getting ready to tell me in the third chapter, because in the third chapter he said, "Know this also." So, if I don't know what happened in the second chapter, how am I going to get a better understanding of what happened in the third chapter? Because it's in the second chapter, watch what he talk. Look who he's talking to in the second chapter that bounced him off into the third chapter. Pay very, very, very close attention. In the second chapter, in the second chapter, look what he says. In the second chapter, and their words will eat as dot and cranker of whom Hymenius, Hymenius, and Philetus. Philetus and Hymenus. Okay? He's already talking about two people who were in leadership. Hymenus and Philetus. Hymenus and Philetus. And Hymenus and Philetus, was, they was going against the resurrection. And they was teaching people there was no such thing as a resurrection. Watch this. Who concerned the truth having earned who concerning the truth having earned, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some, right? Boom, let's go all the way to the third chapter. Go in the third chapter, but know this also, in the last day early times shall come, okay? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covered with both as proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy, okay? Don't get it twisted, why? Who, 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 brought, who brought little Timothy in the game? Who brought little Timothy in the game? His mother and his grandmother. His mother and his grandmother. So as Paul writing to Timothy, Paul is letting Timothy know, don't be disobedient to your parents, boy. Don't never be disobedient to your parents. But now, that these verses are for those who are in leadership. They're going to be boastful. They're going to be proud. They're going to be lovers of themselves. The whole nine yards. But all this time, we've been making y'all believe this y'all know it's us who are in leadership position. And I'm going to show it to you. Watch. Unthankful. Unholy. 
without natural affection, truce breakers, truce breakers, truce breakers, without self-control, takes us all the way back to the sixth chapter of Revelation, dealing with the red horse, truce breakers. That dude the other day, that dude the other day, what he did in D.C., showed he had no self-control. The people, no self-control. People, that red horse, that second seal, we're going to run that thing all through this Bible. So now you see what's happening in right here in Timothy. That's talking to those who in leadership position, people. Watch this. I'm going to show it to you. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, hating, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Watch this. Verse 6. Having a form of godliness, they having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof for such turn away. Paul said, Paul told Timothy, when you see these type of dudes, and they're going to be in leadership position, but when you see them, stay away from them. Turn away from them. They have a formula of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Paul was always putting Timothy on top of game. Paul said, turn away from them, Timothy. Turn away from them, Timothy. Don't roll with them. Watch this. Verse 6. 4, verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captivity silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. How many of y'all creeping in somebody's house? How many of y'all? This is talking about those who are in leadership position. For the verse 7, verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of truth. Verse 8, now as Janice and Jambres withstood Moses. Do you know Janice and Jambres who withstood Moses? So these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds rape a bait concerning the faith. Who is Janice? And when Moses took his snake and threw it down, they took their snake and threw it down. And when they took their snake and threw it down, Moses had a stick. Moses had a stick. And God told Moses to put the stick down. When Moses put the stick down, the, mo the stick turned into a snake. So they was like, you do that, Moses, we can do it. So they took their stick, and they drew their stick down, and their stick turned to a snake. But look what happened. Moses' snake, stick, ate their snake, stick. Same thing. In perilous time, men will become lovers of the self, Paul was writing to Timothy, let him know to watch those who are in leadership position because that's who this is about. This is why he was telling them about my leaders and my leaders in the third chapter, the second chapter. So when you get to the third chapter, you already giving them understand. Don't get it twisted. Stay focused. Stay focused, Timothy. So now he break it down. Now he used Janice and Jamari during the time of Moses. But look what he said all the way back in the second chapter. Study, Timothy, to show thyself approval as a workman, not being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Study, 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 study. I'm giving you the game, Timothy. I'm putting you on top of game, Timothy. But yet, but yet, we stand in the pulpit and we tell y'all. <laughs> In the last days, men will become lovers of themselves, proud and boastful and high-minded. And y'all think we talking to y'all. When all the while, boom. Boom. Look at your leaders. And every time you look at leaders, go back to them verses of scriptures. Go back to them verses of scriptures. Because people, this is why I tell my people, don't never let nobody give y'all no one verse. Don't never let nobody, continue to read. Continue to read. Because now when you get down to, to the eighth verse, now as Janice and Jamboree's resist the truth, men of corrupt minds rape a concerning the faith, verse nine, but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as there also was. 
That's why I put my people on top of real game. That's why I told y'all last week, don't get caught up in that foolishness that's going on in D.C. That's Bible, baby. This stuff is going to happen, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Nothing about God should catch the children of God by surprise. It's not that what Paul was telling them in, in 1 Thessalonians. It's not that what he was sharing with them. People, let me tell y'all something. It is talking to my people. It's not going to get better. This world is not going to get better. But the thing is, God will put his people on top of game so they would know better. So when this stuff starts to happen, like Jesus said, <laughs> I'm paying no mind. <laughs> Stay focused. I told you what's going to happen. I told, did I, did I tell y'all this was going to happen? Not happening. You su Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. And guess what? Don't give it no energy. Don't be surprised and don't give it no energy. Know that you should be getting yourself right with God because that's going to happen. So this is why we go back in the sixth chapter of Revelation and in the sixth chapter of Revelation, he's going to tell us to take the peace. He's going to take the peace out of the land. He's going to take the peace out of the world. So once he take the peace, you're going to have all type of strife, all type of hatred, all type of bitterness, all type of killing, all type of... Because he done took the peace out of the land. He done took the peace out of the land. So you're coming off the white horse, you're coming off the red horse, you're coming off the black horse, you're coming off the pale horse. Get to the sixth seal, you're coming off a great catastrophe. Now we're getting ready to get into tribulation. So we get into tribulation, now all of this stuff is breeding ground. All of this stuff is breeding ground for the Antichrist to be in position, people. It just don't happen. Go back into Matthew. I told you what's going to happen in Matthew 5, 6, 7, 8. I tell you in 9 and 10. Now we got the division in religion. I show you in 10 what's going to happen. I show you 11 and 12. This stuff here is the preparation for the Antichrist to be in position. All this stuff that Jesus said that's going to happen, is going to happen. And as it happened, now you're getting ready to see. Wow. Wow. So as believers, why are we so surprised? Why are we so surprised about what happened in D.C.? I'm not. <laughs> why? Because Paul wrote to Timothy and told him, boastful, proud, love of themselves, high-minded, which takes us back into the sixth chapter of Revelation. Once them seals come off that book, see, once the testament of God is open, that is God's will, people. This stuff is going to happen. <laughs> I hate to be the one to better news, <laughs> but <laughs> it is what it is. It's going to happen. Who going to stop it? Name somebody who could stop it. Name anybody who could stop it. But all our life, we've just been told, well, just pray it's going to go away. No, it's not. No, it's not. We like to run into it. When we go in that in, 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 in that Chronicles and we read what, 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 what the scripture says, if my people will call by my name, should humble themselves, and all of that we say, God was telling Solomon, because Solomon is building a temple, and God is letting Solomon know, look, man, <laughs> my people got to get themselves together. My people, they really, really got to get themselves together. Why? Because the time is coming. The time is coming when I'm going to send a whole new Jerusalem. Boom! But yet, but yet, we've been running around thinking God going to heal this land. Why? Can anybody please tell me why? Why would he heal this land? When he got a whole new kingdom waiting to come down to this earth. Why would he heal this land? No. He want his people to get their mind right. And this is what Solomon is telling the people. If my people were called by mine, if they would cut all that foolishness out and get their mind right, whew, I got a new hurt. I got a new heaven and a new earth waiting on them. But, 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 we've been taking these scriptures so out of contents. He that is faith over little going to be ruled over much. No, no. He that is faithful over little See, when that time come for them thousand years, during the time, during the millennium, now you're going to be a ruler. Why? Because you're going to sit in heavenly places. Now you're going to be able to judge. Not today. That's not for today. That's a promise that's coming. But nobody ain't been telling us right from wrong. Nobody been telling us right from wrong. Why? Because you have to study to show thyself first approval as to God. 
as a workman, not being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. First Thessalonians, tell us about the rapture. Second Thessalonians, tell us about the coming. So first Thessalonians is the rapture, second Thessalonians is the coming. Why? Because the first Thessalonians is not his second coming. His second coming don't take place to the 19th chapter of Revelation. So now all our life we've been talking about the second coming of Christ. When is the second coming of Christ? Because it showed not the rapture. It is show not the rapture. The rapture is not the second coming of Christ. When we go in the 19th chapter of Revelation, we look at the 19th and 20th and the 21st chapter of Revelation, then we see the second coming of Christ. Why? Because we got to go all the way back to the garden. And when we go all the way back in the garden, God said, I will put intimate between thou seed <laughs> and her seed. Everything come out of that woman, Satan been trying to destroy. Because in the garden, God had told him it will come out that woman. It will come out that woman. God said, and thou shalt bruise his head, and she shall bruise thy heel. So, okay, now we see all this stuff getting ready to happen. Boom! But it ain't to the 19th chapter of Revelation. We see what happened in the 12th chapter, but the 12th chapter gives us a better understanding of the greatest spiritual war there was. What takes us to the 13th chapter, and we go to the 13th chapter of Revelation. Look what happens in the 7th and the 8th verse. Watch this, people. I'm talking to my people, so we won't be running around here looking all crazy. Talking about we go, this go, it is not going nowhere, people. This is the will of God, people. Revelation 13, 7 and 8. Look what it says. I'll be back, Thessalonians. Let me highlight, let me highlight, let me highlight Revelation for a second. Revelation 13. Seven says, Revelation 13, 7 says, and it was given unto him. Who? Who? Who it was given to? And it was given unto him. Who? The Antichrist. To make war with the saints. To make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred. Who? The Antichrist. And tongues and nation. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him who, whose name is written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Okay, where's it going to get better at? God gave him power to do what he's going to do. Same thing when we go back in the book of Job. God allowed Satan to attack Job. So now we go in the book of Revelation. God is giving him power. Where you think gonna get this power from? People, we've been running in these churches. Oh my God. But guess what? When we go back in the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians tells us in the fullness of time. So now we have reached the fullness of time. And it's the fullness of time where now God is revealing to his people his word. We don't have to sit in nobody's classroom. We don't have to sit in the church. We in our houses. We on our jobs. We in our cars. We everywhere getting the word of God every day. Raw, real, and uncut. Hour, hour and a half. He just breaking bread with his people. He just teaching his people from Revelation all the way to Genesis. From Revelation all the way to Genesis. And you're in your cars, you're on your jobs, you're in your homes, you're in your beds, you're outside, you're everywhere, you're walking the track, you're doing everything. And God is teaching his people. Why? Because the fullness of time has come. When I was teaching this back in 2000, 2001, I was just teaching it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really get it then. But now, to teach it almost 20 years, well, better yet, we 20 years later. To teach it 20 years later, and now I'm starting to see what I once was teaching way back then. Ooh, 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 ooh. And you think, I'm going to play with him? 
and you think, I'm going to play with him? Nobody in the world is that intelligent. Nobody in the world is that genius. Nobody in the world is that smart that they could have written something this many years ago, and now we see him being played out. Division, deception, division, control, kill. Deception, division, control, kill. In the book of Revelation, sixth chapter, the red horse is the seal that has come off the book. The seven seals has a seal that's on the book. That's all that is. And every seal, every seal come off represent what is written in the book. And once all the seals come off, now the book can be open. And those who have sealed it, now you get ready to see what's in the book. Why? Because like I said, when Ghost wrote his will, it was sealed by Tyreek, it was sealed by the wife, it was sealed by this one, it was sealed by that one. And the book couldn't be opened until those people were present. And once those people were present, now the will could be opened. You're going to get this, you're going to get that, you're going to get this, you're going to get that, you're going to get this, you're going to get that. Same thing. That's all it is. That's all it is. It is the will of God. Now, who in the world going to stop the will of God? Where my church folks at? Where my church folks at? Who going to stop the will of God? <laughs> you heard what Ezekiel said. God told Ezekiel, I don't care if it's Noah, Daniel, what? Get out of here. Noah, Daniel, or Job. <laughs> and they were righteous. All three of them was righteous. Noah, Daniel, and Job. He said, I don't care if they showed up. They would only be able to save themselves from what's getting ready to happen in the ending of time. Look what God told Daniel. Come here, Daniel. Say they won't thank you lying. Come here, Daniel. Where you at? Daniel 12. In 8, Daniel 12 and 8, watch this. Daniel 12 and 8 says, 8 verse, and I heard, and I heard, but I understood not. I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Why? Why? Because God allowed Daniel to see what's going to happen in the ending of time in the book of Daniel. And Daniel is recording the book of Revelation. So how we don't know Revelation when we done read Daniel? But we know how to do it Daniel fast though, huh? Watch this. Verse 9, 12 and 9. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed and seal till the time of the end. <laughs> God told that. Say, Daniel, don't be trying to check me, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, don't worry about that, baby. Go about your business. You done did what you had to do. The book is closed and the book is sealed into the ending of time. It's not that what God told Daniel. You want me to read it again? I read it again. And he said, go that way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Daniel seen what was going to happen in the ending of time. That's why Jesus in the 24th chapter, 15 verse of Matthew, it said, when you see the abomination of desolation written by Daniel. When you see the abomination of desolation written by Daniel. Daniel, what is the abomination of desolation? Thirteen chapter of Revelation. The thirteen chapter of Revelation takes us into the fifth and sixth verse that give us the abomination of desolation, which takes us into Second Thessalonians, third and fourth verse, the abomination of desolation. He said, when you see this, not. In order to understand Daniel, people, and we're going to walk this. I'm going to tell you this over and over and over and over and over again till you get it. Why? Because that 13th verse of Revelation, give it to us. Go back and look at the dream that, Dan, that King Nebuchadnezzar had. Tie the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had with the dream that Daniel had. 
So once you tie the dream with King Nebuchadnezzar had, with the dream that Daniel had, you take the dream that Daniel had and you tie it into the vision that John had. So when you get the vision that John had and you tie it into with the, the dream that Daniel had, now you got what's written in the 13th chapter of Revelation. Why? Because in the 13th chapter of Revelation, you're going to see the lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. What? Yes. The lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. You go in Daniel, Daniel you're going to tell you about what? The lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. We quote that ten toes down. That ten, oh, ten, you got to be ten toes down. Don't y'all know that's Bible? That come out of the book of Daniel? That deals with the beast? That had, to, that had toes like clay? All of this stuff, Bible people. This stuff is strictly Bible. Watch this. I'm going to wrap this up. Watch this. Daniel. Since I'm in Daniel. I'm going to get it to another Daniel. Since I'm in Daniel. I'm in Daniel. Daniel the seventh chapter says. Watch this. Daniel seventh chapter. Right? And four great beasts came up from the sea. Diverse one from another. Daniel seven and four. The first was like a lion. Daniel seven and five. And behold, another beast was like a bear. Daniel 7 and 6. And I held another like a leopard. Daniel 7 and 7. And dreadful and terrible strong exceeding in the fourth beast. Come here, come here, Revelation. Come here, come here, 13th chapter. Revelation, Revelation, Revelation. I'm going to read 1 and 2, but watch this. Revelation 1 and 2. And I stood up on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like a bear, and his mouth was like a lion, and the dragon gave him power, and he sat in the great authority. A lion, a bear, a leopard, a beast. A lion, a bear, a leopard, a beast. So that's how the Antichrist, out of the first, the first verse, where it says that the beast came out of the body of water. So now once he come out of the body of water, how he going to get power? The lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. So now once he become in power through the lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast, in order to understand the lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast, you got to go to the dream of Daniel. When you go to the dream of Daniel, you got to go to the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because guess what? Where was Babylon? Babylon was known for what? The lion. <laughs> okay. So now we got the lion and the lion came from Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar. Dream. Babylon. Media Persia, Greece, Rome. Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome. Dare your dream, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. Beast, Rome. Beast, Rome. King Nebuchadnezzar dream, gold, silver, bronze, iron. Gold, silver, bronze, iron. Babylon, gold, Media Persia, silver, Greece, bronze, Rome, iron. Beast, iron. Rome, iron. Well, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. People, <laughs> one thing about God's people, according to the word of God, it will not catch us like a thief. Why? Because we know the truth. But how many of us going to spend this time with God? Where God going to break the word of God like that down to us? In order to understand Daniel's dream, you got to understand King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. When you understand King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, you tie it to Daniel's dream. And you take Daniel's dream and you tie it to the vision of John. <laughs> I love that Bible. I love that Bible. I love that Bible. So now, 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 when we get to go into Matthew, we get to go into Daniel, we come out of Daniel, we go into Ezekiel, we come out of Ezekiel, we go in Isaiah, we come out of Isaiah, we go into Numbers, we come out, we just gonna run the whole Bible. And the whole Bible, you're gonna be like, wow, yes, it's been there the whole time, people. It's been right there the whole time. Watch this, go back in the 13th chapter.
And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like unto a bear, and his mouth was like unto an iron. And the dragon gave him his power, and he sat in a great authority. Verse 3, and I saw one of his heads, and it was wounded to death. And his deadly wounds was healed. Wounded to death, and his deadly wounds were healed. And all the world wanders after the beast. And all the worlds wandered after the beast. The 13th chapter of Revelation let us know about the beast. And the beast is going to become in power. And this is how we're going to get our first one world order. But watch this. As the scripture says, it was wounded unto death, but now the beast, but now the beast is healed. Go back into Daniel, and Daniel talks about how the feet was iron and the toes were clay, and the toes are now gone, but the foot iron is still there. That shows us in the 13th chapter of Revelation how the beast was once wounded, but now the beast is healed. So guess what? Rome is going to come back in power according to boom, Daniel. Why? Because guess what? Go back into 1 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter, and 1 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter tells us what? About the rapture. How many people going to get caught up in the rapture? Billions of people. <laughs> Gone. But before the rapture, how many are going to die? Billions of people. <laughs> Why? Because when that red horse come, that red horse is going to kill a lot of people because it's going to cause a lot of division, which now going to open the door for the black horse. And the black horse is going to deal with the economy. And the economy is going to deal what? Mess up a lot of people. What takes us to the pale horse? So the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse, which is going to kill billions of people. How many people are going to be left on earth, y'all? <laughs> when this time comes, how many people going to be left? Not that many. That's what's going to make it so easy for the one man to control the world. It ain't even, when it ain't even blowing. How you going to turn the page like that? When it ain't blowing. What you want me to come? You want me to come out of the 14th chapter, 15th chapter? Where you want me to go? Where you want me to go? 15th chapter? Watch this, people. And I saw another sign, Revelation 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. Seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up with the work of God. Wow. Verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire in them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the numbers of his name. Over the beast. These people didn't worship the beast. It's not that what was said when we went in the other verse. These people didn't worship the beast. They, get, they, get, they didn't get the mark of the beast, nor did they fall for that 666 man. Why? Because 666 is a man. That's why we go to 13th chapter. Oh, God, you be tying this stuff in together. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You got to know Bible, baby. You got to know this Bible. So watch this. Back to the second. And I saw it and it was a sea as a mingled glass with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the numbers of his name, 666, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Back to 13, 13 and 15, and I had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause them as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Man, we could run this revelation all day. People, <laughs> the Antichrist is going to come through worship and you're going to worship the image the same thing take us to the book of Daniel Cedric, Meshach and Abednego they didn't bow down to the what? golden image of who? King Nebuchadnezzar so since they didn't bow down to the golden image who saved them? God same thing people 
This stuff is all Bible. So the same thing that happened in the book of Daniel is going to be the same thing that's going to happen in the end of the time. He's going to want you to bow down to the image of the Antichrist and it's going to come through worship. Go on, you want to turn the page again? Wait, ain't even blowing. You just turn the page. All right, that's a wrap. Enough for the day. I just love that Bible. We're going to run this book of Revelation and we're going to keep bouncing in that 13th chapter. Why? Because it's in the 13th chapter where people be so concerned about the mark of the beast. People, no such thing as a mark of beast for believers. Why? Because we have the Spirit of God that dwells in us and we've been sealed until the day of redemption. This is why salvation is a continuous thing and you are saved to the day of redemption until he come and get us so why as believers we worried about a mark we can't worry about no mark no such thing as no mark when we have already been sealed <laughs> now boom back to the 13th chapter of revelation when we deal with the mark of the beast the mark of the beast church gone okay so now if you in church you believe in christ you're a believer why are you worried about a mark it's not for you that's not going to come to the last three and a half years of the tribulation. For the tribulation period will only be seven years. The first three and a half years, boom, 10 chapter of Revelation. 13th, the 13th chapter pick up the last three and a half years, boom. So now, what are you worried about? As a believer, what are you worried about? You know why you're worried? Because you don't know. But God said, okay, I got my people. Mike, I know it's cold out there. Go teach my people. Mike, go teach my people. So every day, he give it to me. Here. <laughs> he give it to me. Here. <laughs> I give it to you. So who have an excuse now? Who have an excuse? Because he's breaking it down to the lowest term. Now, whenever you hear them seven seals, that's because the seal, the book was sealed. Now, the book got to come out. Why? Because that's the testament and that's the will of God for the ending of time. So now we got to go through what we got to go through. Why? Because like Tyree tried to do to go to the man. I need a few dollars. I don't need all of it. I need some of it. The man say, no, you can't get none of it until you do what you're supposed to do. So now, as a believer, how you think you're going to get in the kingdom of God when you're not doing the will of God, but you want a part of God? It don't work like that, people. All right. The good God. Now, how you turn the pages and the wind wasn't even blowing, bro? You just say, bro, that. <laughs> that my dude. Fuck it, my love for my people. Man, my dude turned the page, the wind ain't even blowing. Ain't, ain't no wind even blowing down here, bro. You turned the page. I'm in the 13th chapter. You took me all the way to the 15th chapter, boy. Woo, woo. Come on, God, you bad boy. You got that. I respect your game, baby. I ain't gonna, I know not to play with you. You ain't about to pluck me on another galaxy. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years, that's one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise that some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening to the coming day of God, where the heavens being on fire, be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, where in dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless, in account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the will given unto him, as written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them of these things, which, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, unstable, wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, be well, lest you also be led away with the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and knowledge by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be the glory both now and forever. Amen.
people, we're gonna run this whole book. We're just gonna run the whole book. We're gonna bounce from Daniel to Matthew, from Matthew to Thessalonians, from Thessalonians to Romans, from Romans to Revelation, from Revelation back into Jew, go to Jew, run and holler at Timothy, come out of Timothy, go way in the Old Testament, get some out of Genesis, come out of Genesis, go back to Revelation. We're just gonna run through this whole Bible. We're just gonna run all 1180 three verses. We're going to run all 66 books. The devil played what does he had us. Oh, don't read Revelation. Revelation. Oh, Revelation is scary. No, it's not. Back up off us. Oh, don't read Revelation. Revelation going to drive you crazy. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, uh, it ain't, it's not scary, nor will it drive you crazy. But yet, it's the book. And when you get a better understanding of that book, it opens up the whole book. It opens up the whole entire book. So now I got a better understanding what Paul was saying to the church at Thessalonians. So when I come out of Thessalonians, I got to understand what Paul was saying to Timothy. I come out of Timothy, I understand what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was saying. So when I understand what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is saying, now I understand the book of Acts. Why? Because the book of Acts is the early church. But before I got in the book of Acts, I had to come out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why? Because it was in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Jesus said, I got to go. Okay, Jesus, why are you leaving? But I'm going to leave you to what? I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave you the church. So now that I left you the Holy Spirit in the church, we got to walk the book of Acts. We got to come through. Oh, we're going to walk the whole Bible. We're just going to walk the whole Bible. We're just going to we're gonna walk the whole entire Bible every day. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to go slow, 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 so you can have a better understanding. So now, when you hear about the seven churches, they real. When you hear about the seven seals, that's because the book was sealed. When we get to the eighth chapter, now we from the eighth to the eighteenth chapter, that's nothing but the judgment of God. Why? Because the nineteenth chapter deal with the second coming. The nineteenth chapter deal with the second coming. The nineteenth chapter deal with the second coming. And the twentieth chapter deal with the millennium. So when the twentieth chapter deal with the millennium, coming off the second, coming off the nineteenth chapter of the second coming, then we get in the twenty-first chapter, and now we see the New Jerusalem. Come down, the new Jerusalem come down, the new Jerusalem come down, and we see how the Jerusalem is built. We know we got 12 gates, and the 12 gates of the children of Israel. We got four on the north, three on the north, three on the south, three on the east, three on the west. Three times four is 12 all day. And all the gates that around the new Jerusalem represents the children of Israel. The foundation is the foundation of the apostles. So all 12 apostles hold the foundation of this. Oh, man. That's why Jesus said, told Peter, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So when the new Jerusalem come now, boom, it's going to be in the midst of hell. And the gates of hell won't be able to penetrate. How? Oh, this thing. Oh, we're going to run this bike. We're going to run this bike. <laughs> now it makes sense. Now it makes sense when Jesus said that. New Jerusalem gonna come now. Boom. New earth gonna come now. Boom. Where it's gonna fall in the midst of hell. Boom. And the gates of hell will not be able to prevail it. <laughs> so just like with Noah, when Noah built the boat and the water came, the people was trying to get in the boat. Too late. So when the new Jerusalem come now, the new earth come now, and all of those who are burning up in that fire going to try to get in, too late. <laughs> Bible, baby. <laughs> Bible. Why well, I love that Bible. I just run that Bible all day. I just want to talk Bible. Let's just talk Bible. We ain't about to do nothing there with that fool. Yeah. 